You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience, but we all have a lot of fun in the beginning of this episode. That's the first 44 minutes. It's the intro portion where we talk about current events. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of today's episode. By the way, before I do, I want to let everybody know our Black Friday sale is going on right it's now. It's happening, you guys. This is the biggest sale of the year by far. All individual MAPS workout programs are 65% off. That's crazy. Yeah, 65% off. And our bundles, which are already discounted, multiple programs already discounted, is an additional 50% off. All right? So here's what you do. Go to MAPS Fitness Products. Dot com for 65% off individual MAPS programs. Use the code BFMAPS. And for bundles, if you want 50% off bundles, use the code BFBUNDLES. Again, that's at MAPSFitnessProducts.com. All right. Freaking bundles. So we open the episode by, uh, of course, we have a lot of fun, and we're talking about my baby boy. Uh, he's advanced. He's much oh, more advanced baby boy. than more other. He's like in the 100th percentile for three-week-olds. I looked up the Basically studies. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> Then we talked to Adam and Justin about their crazy drive home. Poor guys were very scared. Oh, had to hug. It was a harrowing experience. Embrace and do weird things. We locked thought pinkies. It was the last. They had pinky toes. Yeah. Uh, then we talk about how sheriffs in California are refusing to enforce uh, Czar Gavin Newsom's orders. Oh, Lord Newsom <laughs> isn't happy about that. <laughs> then we talk about uh, the Black Friday sale. I already mentioned that. I talk about the squats I did this weekend. I did a lot of squats, uh, 10 sets of squats. Squats. And I'm feeling really good. Uh, then we talk about the movie shoot that's happening by Justin's house yeah. with one of the most handsome Hollywood actors Dude's ever. He's trying to take my wife. Uh, and then we talk about the skiing adventures that Justin had with his two sons mm. uh, this weekend. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know if a food intolerance can actually prevent you from deriving the nutritional value of food. So does having intolerance affect how the food is assimilated and utilized by the body? The next question, this person wakes up in the morning feeling very stiff and immobile Wants to know if there's anything they can do. Get your head out of the gutter, Justin. Yeah, I, I, it's not there. Next question. This guy says, look, I'm bulking, but I'm actually just getting fat. What's the deal? Mm. And the final question. This person wants to know how vocalizing our personal opinions has either helped or hurt our business. Again, I mentioned the Black Friday sale for the programs and for the bundles. One more thing. We're also having a Black Friday sale on all of our accessories, sweatshirts, hats, drinkware, you know and you want to accessorize. t-shirts. So again, at our Mind Pump store, we sell things like resistance bands, suspension trainers. We sell t-shirts and sweatshirts and hats and all kinds of stuff. Get everything at a Gym massive flags. discount between 25 to 60% off. That's at mindpumpstore.com. And then if you missed the uh, Black Friday place to go for the programs, it's mapsfitnessproducts.com. Well, yeah, you know, my when my son was little, he was all he was all worried because he said a bad word, and I was like, "Tell me what it was, come on, buddy, it's okay." And he's like, "I don't want to say it again." I'm like, you won't get in trouble. I'm like, yeah. what letter does it start with? He goes S. I'm like, oh man. Oh no. I'm like, Here it comes. I'm like, shit's not that bad of a word. And he looks at me, he's like, "What's shit?" <laughs> I'm like, huh? I'm like, what like, word? My, what word did you say? He goes, "Stupid." I was like, ah. You're right. I remember when you, you said don't want to use that. I yeah. got to be careful. Hey, speaking of kids, I got a I got another m milestone situation that I'm curious to hear um, you guys uh, enlighten me, like on these moments, right? So, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, this is, as a dad, like you're you're, you're like. You know, stretching things, and then every once in a while you overreach, like in working out. The same thing happens. I feel like with like messing with my son, like oh, he's not ready for that yet. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yes, I have. Yeah. I did that like many introducing times. Introducing things. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, anything, right? So we're we're reading, doing our our, our usual night thing that we do, and he's got this uh, book that we've been reading for like the last I'd say a month or so, and. You open it and it's got like a, a hole about this big in the front of it, and he like you know we play peekaboo and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And like his favorite thing to do is like he we're out rereading it and he'd be sticking he sticks his foot through the hole in his hand, and so <laughs> you know a bit, he's been playing a lot with that. And, That's a good time, right? So he uh, he's grabbing my hand now and he wants he wants me to put my hand through it, right? So uh, he grabs my hand to put it through there, and I pretend like the book sucks my hand in. 
Oh, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, oh, dude, he just. <laughs> I felt so bad, dude. Uh, I thought, oh shit, he's not ready for that yet. That's, hey, yeah. that's your job, dude, as a dad. Your job is to constantly do that. Uh, I did that to my son. He you was, gotta film it though. Oh, dude, I did it to my boy. He was like eleven, and I'm and I'm, you know, him and I used to watch cartoons together. And there was this like anime cartoon. It was kind of cool, but it was a little scary. It was a little mm -hmm. frightening, a little bit. I'm like, he's eleven. You know, yeah. he's he's a good. He's gonna have a good time. Anyway, we're watching it. He's totally into it, and the freaking. One of the monsters comes out and bites someone in half. <laughs> and he, he goes, he didn't even cry, dude. He did one of these. <gasps> and he kind of he <laughs> kind of like froze. Shell shock. Oh, dude. I was like, I just damaged my kid right now. Uh, you want to know what's funny? He would not watch that for years <laughs> yeah. afterwards. Yeah. That scared the shit out of him. I, yeah, I did that when uh, the, when we were at Disneyland. And uh, I forget what, what ride is that. The one, the, the main roller coaster. That's like the one. It was like Halloween. Oh, it's the uh, Matterhorn. Matterhorn. Yeah. No, the, not the Matterhorn. The other one. Oh, the, uh, uh, Space, Space Mountain. Mountain right? Oh, it's all so dark. Space Mountain. Yeah. So it, And so they changed it. And I didn't know because of Halloween. They, they made like this super creepy ass like ghost follow us you know as we're going on this this is the first time he even like went on a roller coaster I'm oh, like, that's gonna be fine dude this is this is disneyland everything is fun and happy and exciting <laughs> and we're sitting on there and like we're getting into it it's super dark and everything's cool and he's just like really nervous and he's like holding on to me like super tight and we're getting up through this and then this ghost thing comes to like eat us and he's like ah <laughs> we left out of there. He was like just shivering, you know. Oh I was like, "Oh my god, I fucked up." I was uh, the good, worst. Good, I'm not that bad of a dad. Yeah, it's, huh? you're gonna do it more. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was too early. I was the worst with my younger brother because let's see, he's six years younger than me. So, I'm, I, so as I got older, I was not old enough to really judge things as well. So mm. I used to do that to him constantly. Like I gave him a jalapeno when he was like four or five, you know. <laughs> Like, yeah, he can handle it. I'm like, here, try this out, buddy. Ah, you know, <laughs> you drink water, it gets worse. Ah. Eyes are all crying. Oh, ah. yeah, dude. I gave him duct tape to play with, and he tuck taped his hair, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. I had to cut his hair, and I made him promise not to tell my mom. And I gave him a uh. pocket knife. This is how I got him not to tell my mom. I'm like, don't tell mom. Don't tell me he's crying. Uh. Yeah. I'm like, here, I'll I gave him a pocket knife. He was like seven. <laughs> like, don't tell mom. I'll let you have yeah. this. Here's something more dangerous. He's, yeah, he still fucks with me to this day about that. He's like, dude, you ruined me. You gave me a pocket knife when I was seven. I could have killed someone. <laughs> could have hurt myself. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah. Anyway, speaking of kids, um, I forget about this. There's this bias, right, when you have a kid where you try to see them objectively, but you can't help but think that they're special. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Like they do something you're like, oh, this kid's he's way ahead. My kid like is what, the best at like this. Like I remember when Max first like lifted his head up, and he's like, look, look how early he's lifting his yeah, head. Exactly. Right now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's gonna be so strong. Yeah, exactly. And you think everybody else cares about that yeah, stuff? Yeah, right. You look yeah, it you up. Tell him all your yeah. friends. So I did this. Yeah, you look yeah, it up. He's cool. like four months ahead right now. So yeah. I did this the other day, right? So he's like, he's not even three weeks old yet, right? So I'm, I pick. This was like two days ago. I pick him up, and I'm holding him and whatever. And he, he stares. He's very alert. So he like stares at me and kind of, you can tell he's studying my face and I'm smiling at him and I'm making faces and then he smiles back. And I'm like, this is really early for a baby to be smiling. I'm like, Jessica, get over here. Yeah. So she comes over and I'm smiling and then he does it again. And she's like, what's the big, I'm like, honey, babies three weeks old don't smile. They don't, they don't socially smile. So I had to look it up and I'm showing her. I'm like, you do realize he that is a savant. this is a sign of a genius. <laughs> he's, he's a savant. She's like, you sure he didn't Obviously. like, you sure he wasn't pooping or something? <laughs> yeah, <it's>, I'm <laughs> like, he did it twice. He's just got gas. Yeah. So I'm like, <gasps> I'm like set now. You know what I mean? In my head. I'm like, this kid's going to be brilliant. Oh, he's gonna, oh, let's see how well this episode air, uh, ages. Yeah. <laughs> he, gets a, he gets an F in you know, whatever, oh, art man. class. Yeah. I well, you want to think the best always. Yeah, I used know? to think you were going to be a genius. Yeah. Listen to this episode. Anyway. Oh, easily. Yeah, Dude, do, you guys, do you guys have a good weekend? Weren't you guys up bro, in this? You listen, yeah. listen to this. So I got, to, I got a handful of stories for you about this weekend and then our drive home, which was crazy. Uh, yeah. So did you guys see the video we sent over? of the When Justin was pulling in, I just happened to be outside. I was checking... Uh, Doug sent me up with light bulbs. Oh, that's right. That's how we started the weekend. Yeah. And so I was uh, out. I was open the door. It's like, I don't know. What you guys roll up? Eight and nine o'clock at night? Yeah. Somewhere around eight, eight o'clock or so at night. And I, I just changed the light bulbs for the, the garage and they weren't turned on. So I was all pissed. I got the door open. It's freezing outside. And I'm like messing with the switches, trying to watch it. And just as I'm doing that, Justin's coming around the corner and he comes pulling in the driveway and his lights hit the front garage and all of a sudden you see two bears yeah. come running out across our, our driveway, probably teenagers, you Just know, huffing it. Yeah. yeah. 
The worst kind of bears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if they were cubs, and we were all afraid that maybe the mom was around because I was standing there with Max. Max was like right behind me. I had the door wide open, and I'm like oh, messing yeah. with the lights. All of a sudden, the lights hit, and then there's like two bears running right in front of us. So I like yell at Katrina, yeah. grab Max. Courtney did not want to get out of the car. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> bet. Like, I don't two know. Bears? There's got to yeah. be like a mom around here somewhere we lurking. Had, we had the one big ass bear come in breaking yeah, the house. How, now there's two more. Here's what's cool, though. I meant to tell you this, Doug. I didn't even tell you this yet so i went uh, yesterday before i left to go kind of inspect like the area to see if they messed around and there's paw marks all over the door the new the new door but no damage or anything so yeah. it's just like there this the new door is good it's got the we got the round knob we've got the bolt on the outside that that sheet metal is like bolted in they're not gripping on any of that so Damn, we'll not, see we'll see if i'm we not down with smart him for not once. down with the bears dude yeah, yeah. i don't well, like that yeah. dude it's a honey pot you know it's like they've every time they've gone there they've gotten something out of it i know so you know i, I don't blame them for keep coming back for more yeah, yeah we didn't even have any trash in there or anything but i think that's i think justin's right i think they've scored so many times that it's they, on the bear internet yeah. you know? this is the place to get <laughs> yeah, yeah that's yeah, the, I the saw it on the satellite floor. marked it. Yeah, yeah. You know? groups yeah. of them are showing up now, dude. <laughs> Damn. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, having but little hey, bear parties. Listen to this though. So last night, Justin and I, uh, we rally and 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 drive late last. Night. I was like, either drive really late last night or super early. Yeah, super early this morning. And I looked at Justin. I'm like, bro, I'd rather get on the road late at night and then sleep in my own bed than like get up at four o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. try and be here. Right? Yeah. So we both agree, and we we hit the road kind of late last night. What time did you guys end up leaving? Uh, like nine or somewhere like that. Oh, geez, that's yeah. really late. Yeah. So eight, did you guys get home like three o'clock in the morning? No, no. Well, we got home at like twelve thirty. Yeah, twelve thirty one yeah, somewhere so. around there. <laughs> I'm not good with math. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like whoa, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's quite a few hours. Carry the there. two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you add add like a whole another hundred. We went miles. down to San Diego and back. My yeah. bad. Yeah. So. Yeah. My bad. Anyway. No, so we're we're driving right, and uh, yeah, Justin and I are you know talking back and forth, and we get to the top of Donner Pass, and all of a sudden we're in the middle of a fucking blizzard. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, like we're we're flying like seventy miles an hour, you know, and you know Donner Pass where it's you know you got all the the windy turns and up there, all the diesel Super trucks, steep all the trucks everywhere, yeah. And all of a sudden, I mean, I'm talking like mid conversation, doesn't whack. Yeah. Like just a cloud of snow comes in, and all of a sudden we are in looks like look like we're in like warp, like hyperdrive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wild warp but, speed. And Super. now you guys are both in your trucks. Where he's with me and, and mine. I drove. I drove him home. Oh, yeah. Courtney's coming back up today, so he's it's just him and I and our, our truck together. Oh, so she's still up there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. So so we're driving and talking, and then all of a sudden this hits us, and I mean instantly everyone slows down and people sliding around on the road. You can feel how slippery it is, and can, I haven't been in that bad of a storm. I've told the story. I don't know if I told it on mine pump. But I uh, I got caught in a storm one time where uh, it was this was my high school sweetheart. I was about 20 years old and we were driving. Um, I don't know why we were doing this, but we were staying in South Lake Tahoe, but we were skiing in North Lake. I don't know why, but that's what we were doing. And so we stayed uh, in North Lake all day until late at night and decided to drive back home to our, our cabin, which is it's about an hour drive around the lake. So North and mm -hmm. South Shore takes about an hour. So we were driving and that's uh, 28 and 50. And that's where you're, you know, you're driving near Incline Village where Doug used to live, that area over there. And there's like cliffs. Yeah, it's and super sketchy. And I got caught in a in a blizzard on the way there to where it was a complete whiteout. The the ground, the entire road was white. It's a two lane highway. And we had to drive like 10 miles an hour all the way around. Like scariest night, one of the scariest nights of my life being caught in that storm. This was the second worst like storm yeah, like you that. You just couldn't see. Did yeah. you guys like hold hands and we did. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we tried sing to songs. We tried to act so all, nothing different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to act all cool like it wasn't it really was scary. But I'm like though. this, We're you know, up on the steering wheel, like looking as it's a know. good thing you have an excessively lifted uh, ridiculous truck. That's right. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I definitely was in handy. Dude. I felt a lot safer than with a little Honda that was right next <laughs> to us. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, but that guy is shitting himself oh, right there. Wow. I got stuck one time going up to Tahoe. We were driving up there in two cars, my cousin's family and our family. And the storm was so bad, the whole road stopped, and we were literally stuck in place. And this was terrible because kids had to go to the bathroom, and there was nowhere to go. We were stuck in the same place for four hours until we finally decided that was probably Donner to Pass. turn around. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it was Donner Pass because yeah. yeah. usually been, you need we chains. literally had to go back. We just turned around. Yeah. They closed the whole it, thing, and it only hit there. So we called the the girl once we got through it. Right, we get on the bottom, and I called Katrina. I'm like, hey, because I called her and she didn't answer before that, and then I called again. I said, well, you're not even worried about us. You guys not because I thought the storm went through there and then hit them. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, they would have saw the. Snow. It didn't even hit them. It was, it was just, just a peak. There. It was just the peak of Donner got nailed hella hard and it was scary as shit. And Dude, then we so yeah we keep driving and we start noticing there's a lot of cops 
out and uh they were we're like okay wait i guess it's like quota time or something maybe they're like gonna be pulling people <laughs> over you know they're they they're weren't even it they in. weren't even out out though they were like lights like wedged in with their lights off you know which we we're discussing I, I think you're like that's they're not allowed to do that anymore right because like, you have to be able to see them otherwise it's a super you know big hazard like, not only that will, that you can get away that you can get you can get away with a ticket because it's it, like entrapment because you can't see them you're supposed to be able to see part of the cop car and they have to have their parking lights on i don't mm-hmm. know i think yeah are, i don't think you no know, you no no a- that's true dude and and then we're so and, you have you have to know it's a cop to, in order to get a ticket no you don't have to know it's a cop you just have to be able to see that it has parking lights on like so they have to keep their the little they have park- to have some visibility yeah they can't be on the side of a freeway but anyway it, pitch black. dude we kept driving and we just saw this and they, they didn't even care about anybody else like we just were driving and they weren't even looking at us they kept looking up you know for something and we're just like well this is really weird you know and we kept going like, a couple miles there's more cops like wedged in really like tight places like hiding away and you know on the radio and then we go a little bit further and there's this one cop he's actually outside his car right he's outside his car and i look over and we both saw he had like one of those strips you know where, where they throw across the road oh to, shit to, yeah, yeah to, to pop tires and i'm like this is like a five lane freeway like what the hell like why would you like even if you are going to try and stop somebody like you're going to throw like that out there and everybody's going to go well they must have been waiting for oh, somebody we were, yeah we're at this point justin and i are like tripping you guys right? making up stories yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. well okay <laughs> oj's behind us we're like what what so and it was you know it was at least a good 20 to 30 minutes which was probably at least you know 10 exits and at every exit there was at least two or three cop cars hidden in the dark some of the cops were out doing this so Justin and I are like, you know, speculating. We're like, you don't just do that for someone who's like speeding or some bullshit. Like even like a even like a stolen car isn't enough to get that many cops out. So we're trying to figure out what the fuck's going Late on. Late at night. Yeah, yeah. Blizzard. Yeah, we just came sure out. You of- guys had some weed. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> thank- totally. Hey, thank God we did. No, we we, we actually brought that up. We're like, dude, paranoid. could you imagine if we would have smoked? Or so? Been so <laughs> and par- all those cops. Oh my God, we would have been paranoid, dude. <laughs> oh. So freaked out. But here, oh so God. we're driving down. We're on eighty. It gets and, crazier. And we're and we're seeing this, and we keep and and it's just getting more and more. And I think I was the first one to be a little like sketch about it. And then Justin's like, okay, this is getting weird. It's every exit, and we've been driving for twenty minutes. This is a ton of cops that are just all sitting out on the freeway waiting you're like ready to pounce so we're, we're we're on 80 and we're getting ready if over by vallejo area where you branch off to 680 and it's that over you you go, you go to the right so you've gone through sacramento yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. right and then yeah. you branch off on to get all the way over to get to san jose yeah you have to go all is this the way- when you pass like the budweiser sign or whatever is there a budweiser sign over no, there i don't, I don't know. know it's more like that uh, remember that like putt like golf, yes, place, and, it, like and it's, it's right there. and it's always the part where the the San Jose exit creeps up on you. Where all of a sudden you're on yeah, the left lane, jump across. Yeah, you gotta jump across really quick. So that's exactly what happens. To us, we're driving. Justin tells me like, "Oh, bro, we a San Jose exit." And I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, we're so gonna I miss it. I start merging over. So I look in my rearview mirror, and all I see, fucking way in the back, dude, light sea of of cops, and like, they're all coming, across like coming, all lanes, coming all fast, all four lanes and back five each deep, coming as fast as you can behind us, and I'm looking at him as I'm merging over the right and as I'm merging over the right I see between us and the cops is this white truck dodging in and out of cars no lights on no lights on doing like 120 plus miles an hour in and out of traffic and it's coming right to us yeah and we're getting ready to get right behind us get on this on ramp and I'm like and it was just like a, a, a I mean quick reaction. I thought this like is, I got to stop this guy. Well, no, that's not, no, no. I was like, fuck this. No I ain't getting off right here. If he's going oh, let, there, let him crash to his death. So we go. I, I was like, I told Justin, I'm a fucking. I'm going left. And so I I actually got out of the the exit. And sure shit, he went. He went right behind me to the right of me, and then out the exit, and then all the cop cars flying. So by. So he literally passed by you guys. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like right alongside us, and then took that exit, and then all the cop cars behind. I mean, you're they're trying were, to find out what happened. Did you go on the news. No, we haven't yet. There was this, that was last late last no, night. No, I tried. There's no news over it. It's all just over COVID, you know, and like election. <laughs> nobody gives a shit about like real things. Crazy yeah. stuff happening. Yeah, and nobody cares. Nobody yeah, cares. Yeah. We were wow. there. Bank robber dies of COVID. <laughs> Not, so, yeah. Nothing to do with this crack. This <laughs> car <laughs> flipping six. <laughs> this car, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? COVID got him. Yeah. 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 He, he opened his restaurant when he wasn't <laughs> yeah, supposed yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had more than three people over for Thanksgiving. Yeah. He died. Get that son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> How dare Get you do that? So let me guess. You're driving home late at night. I'm sure you guys had some caffeine because it was late at night night 
driving through a blizzard, helicopts, oh shit, car chase. Yeah. You didn't sleep at all last night. Uh, you know, I I was okay. Once we got home, I was I was. Okay. Oh wait a minute, but your wives and kids are back up back yeah. up. Tr- oh, you guys yeah, slept good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was it was just a weird night though. I was just telling Justin, I'm like, what a weird storm out of nowhere to get oh, hit in. And then I went. was worried that like, because I still had to drive over 17, you know, even after that. And I'm like, dude, I bet you like a mountain lion's gonna jump out of the woods, rah, you know, on my way home or something. And that was like the kind of night it was. Yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love your animal noises. <laughs> yeah. They're awesome. Yeah, no, I just hung out all day, all weekend with the kid. Yeah? Yeah, with the boy and Jessica. Did, so awesome. it was just you three then? It was just us three because uh, my other two kids are with mom. So it was just us hanging out and I got to spend some really good time with them and rock them and play with them and stare at them and hang out with them. Uh, yeah. yeah, so we're having it. Now, how is he with the last time I talked you guys, you're, are you still um, syringe feeding to add to what he was eating or is he now getting enough milk? We're still we're still working on it. It's yeah. definitely uh, uh, it's definitely challenging. Uh, Katrina and I were fighting about this last night, like real fighting. We were like <laughs> arguing over like how long we were doing it for and I swear we were doing it for quite a while. I thought we were doing it for at least a month after he was born. She's like, it was not that long. It was like the first week. And I'm like, what? it's not like a, a knock against you if we had to do that. Relax. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, she takes you gotta a, be careful. Mom's taking it all personal. They like, do. Uh, yeah, Very I'm personal. like, I was like, it's not, that's not the point. I was like, I know because you would breastfeed him and then I would rock him and I would syringe feed him yeah. afterwards. And I loved it. It was like, actually, I couldn't, he wasn't ready for a bottle yet. I obviously can't breastfeed him. So that was my only thing I got to do with him to help, you mm-hmm. know, feed him. And so I actually really enjoyed it. And I remember doing it for, I swear, at least a month. But you know, I got in trouble when I said. That. I know. Mm-hmm. I, I was thinking about that because <laughs> yeah. you got to be. You, if you you're right, they might take it personal. Yeah. Uh, but I get it, right? Because as a as a father, what if she yeah. what if she said, dude, like, yeah, hey, remember that. Remember that year you weren't making that much money? It was a tough year, <laughs> you know. But we made it. You're like, what do you mean? So yeah, hit the balls. We did okay. No, you're right. It's totally like that. Yeah. Where, you know, she gets like it, yeah. it's like something that she was lacking as a mother. She wasn't producing enough. I was like, oh, dude, I didn't yeah. even I didn't even think like that when I said it. And I'm like, oh, you know what? You're right. It was only like a day or two. We yeah, probably, yeah. I had dude, to I remember I remember growing my uh, chest hair back out just to make sure there's no confusion. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you, you mean? know, when you're rocking because you were nursing him for a while. No, so but I, I mean sometimes you're hanging, you put him to sleep and. And then they would kind of like they know, do nuzzle their way down and like no yeah. and like ew ew yeah. and so I started growing like a big patch of hair. Again. They don't lie. I see you the first time like letting it happen a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like ooh, go ahead try. Let's see what, what happens. It's all about. <laughs> no way, dude. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta give you gotta give him some struggle in life. Go ahead, try all you want. There ain't You're nothing not gonna there. get anywhere. Yeah, yeah. no, it's uh, he had a <laughs> so I'll put him on my body, you know, my chest. So we're like skin to skin, and they do that. They kick with their legs. And they start to search, right? And you know that they can see like the color of your nipple is different than your skin and they smell. So they'll actually try to seek it out. Mm -hmm. So he's like doing this thing and he puts his mouth down on my chest to try to, and then he has this confused look because I think he has some chest hair in his mouth. (laughs) (laughs) It's good. You know, he's like, like, dad has this. It's not your your mom. It doesn't work. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's not your mom, buddy. I saw you guys also did the bath first time, right? Yeah. We gave, yeah, we gave him a little bath with the warm, you know, the warm water from the sink or whatever. It's so wild to to like watch you guys go through because I I feel like I just came out of the twilight zone and to see you guys kind of in it right now. So it'll be interesting. I want to hear what you have to say. Like I, I, when I tell people, I say, the first uh, six to eight months was very much so Twilight Zone. Not a lot of sleep. You're not doing very much. Like He's barely starting to get to where he can see and recognize who you are. Yeah. It was after that that I feel like I love right now. Right now where he's at and, and from one, like one year old on now and we're at a year and a half. You're going to have a great time when he's like two and a half, three. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, oh, yeah. He's That's re- when they push back. And yeah. they're little shits. Yeah. About, well, oh, I mean, yeah. I told you last time on the podcast that so he, he's definitely starting I know. to figure, figure shit you out. You told me that. I'm like, you got a smart one in your hands. You're going to be screwed. <laughs> My daughter, you would throw tantrums that I, I'm serious. If you could hook her up to a generator, she would power a city <laughs> with the amount of energy she would produce. Uh, it was insane. You know, she did I ever tell you guys she knocked one of her teeth out one time because she threw such a crazy wow, tantrum? Wow. Yes. Wow. That's powerful. As a little kid, she was in the in the, the, the cart or whatever at the, at the at Target and she wanted a toy. And I'm, and every time we'd go to the store, you'd get her a toy. So I'm like, no, you're not going to get it this time. And yeah. she lost her shit. <laughs> and I thought, you know, normally when this happens, I, I'm not going to give in. She's going to just whatever. Yeah. Anyway, she's freaking out. And you turn around, and then you see blood. What's going on? She must have swung her head and hit her own tooth. Oh, see, I'm, I'm really, I really want to hear from you. I, I hope you remember to do this. As you have these moments of, um, you know, 
oh, I want to be a better dad this time around, or oh, I did this different. I want to hear that. You're like because you were you were experienced already, and it's been a long time since you've had kids. I really want to hear those mo- those self awareness moments yeah. that you have where you're just like, oh, I remember this, and now I'm doing this instead. Like I was telling Justin on the way home that you know our our latest you know parent hack, right? We we uh, it's you know I totally understand now why uh, parents. Uh, appreciate the um, routine, mm-hmm. right? Because when he's home and you know it, the naps are on point, the routine is everything. Oh, it's everything. Uh-huh. It's like the kid's an absolute saint. He's easy. It's it's great, right? As soon as you go, you know, we travels, go somewhere, or what about that for the weekend or a few days, and he's out of his routine. It's like, oh my god, it's like starting all over again of trying to get him to get in, get in, go to sleep and mm-hmm. do all that stuff, and so. <clears throat> and something that I, at least I've learned, like for at least for Max and my experience is that the more as a parent you get frustrated and you resist those types of things, the more difficult it becomes versus trying to just kind of weave in and out of it. Yeah. You know, Justin and I were talking about this. Like you got to, I, like, I call it like putting cones out, you know, like constantly, I'm just always putting cones out to kind of like, you know, maneuver them around to where I eventually I want them to go. It's not like, cause you can't control them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, that's just not going to work out for you. Like uh, you're going to think that you have all these things perfect and, and it's all going to go down this way and it never does. So it's just like, for me, I've just learned to kind of like, you know, at least like build that path So eventually it gets to where I no, want. No, he was, he was sharing this last night. I'm like, it's so funny you say, that because this is like the latest you know parent hack for us is when we go out to Truckee one of the things that is, is always frustrating is exactly that it's like his bedtime routine like it changes his time he goes to bed we don't have the rocking chair we don't have the room like transit I mean we have this whole transition system that we do home I mean we still bath and read that's all normal and feeding time all that but his environment is so different that it's like we're trying to adjust to like how do we get this kid to go right down because he goes right down at home and so what we do is we lay on the bed and because it's instead, again, instead of like resisting him and fighting him and, and dealing with it, we're like, you know, we'll just let him wear down. We After we're done with reading, Katrina literally shuts all the lights off in the room, blacks it out. And she lays on one side of the bed. I lay on the other side of the bed and we just leave him in between us. We don't talk to him. We don't communicate. We don't say anything to him. And we just let him, he kind of goes back and forth between us <laughs> and gets tired. sticks his Ping-pongs head. Around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's like wa- flapping his arms around and talking to himself. And we, we don't communicate with him nothing and just kind of let him do his thing. And 15, 20 minutes or so of him doing that with it pitch black in the room. And we, you know, we can feel the bottom. So if he starts to want to crawl off the bed, you'll feel like Katrina, like shove him over to me and then I pull him up. And, <laughs> you know, and just is like this dance that we do all of, until he finally just kind of wears himself out. And then once he'll eventually park his head like in between either her or me and whichever one he does, that person just naturally gets up, rocks him for a few seconds and then puts him down and then he's oh, out. Yeah. But that's like, it took a while to figure this out. Like, okay, the more we resist him and, and get frustrated with him not wanting to go down because he's in a new place, the more more difficult it Dude, is. The Versus- irony of it all too is that as a kid you fight going to sleep and then when you're older you can't find time to go to sleep. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I I take back all those naps oh, yeah. that I fought. Yeah. I'd love to have a few of those yeah, back. Give me those, mom. You know, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Please. Oh man. Anyway, so is this this episode's up on Thanksgiving, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. Happy it, Thanksgiving. Weird Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. a little bit weird for people. Did you guys hear that the sheriffs in California told Gavin Newsom that they would not enforce his I love this. his Thanksgiving orders? I of course. Love it. Yeah. I mean, the, the young guy doesn't even practice his own laws. Oh. And mandates for I, everybody else. Uh, so, that is you so know, bad. That's that, that's a bad reflection of of leadership. You but, had you had to think that was coming, right? Do you guys have anybody though that like they hear stuff like that and they're like, "Oh, we got to this is what Gavin Newsom said, so we need to do this." Like I don't know anybody that's like There's that. people like that. I think yeah. when people those people DM me. Again. <laughs> <laughs> They get really upset with me. Yeah. <laughs> look, I, I think if you if you look at people's behaviors, when COVID cases go up and people are aware, people naturally start to uh, m- modify their behaviors. Sure. The problem is when you make when you make all these mandates, then they start to rely on you to government to tell them what to do. Yeah. So the second government's like, okay, we're opening back Common up. Sense. Everybody Let's put it over here. Yeah. So I think people naturally would kind of begin, but I do like the fact that the. Now, I'm not saying I think people should have gatherings of massive amounts. But I think people need to be responsible. Right. But I think it's silly that- But let them be adults would, and, and determine what that looks like. What a night- Could you imagine the nightmare that would have created if the police and sheriffs actually- 
Oh yeah, would knock enforced on doors. it. Yeah, that would be. Could you imagine? Dude, well, yeah, that would just that would cause. You're, a you're lot putting of, a lot on them too to do that. Like, come on. And Justin, could you imagine you, being a cop knocking Justin, on? Sorry, guys, you gotta. Yeah. Justin, wasn't weren't you telling me that there was a bunch of protests? There, yeah, in, in Huntington Beach, there was a massive protest. Oh, like, yeah. because of the 10 p.m. curfew or whatever. So they basically just <laughs> turned that into some big parade and march and everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> Immediately at 10 o'clock. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, okay, it's. It's, it's civil disobedience. It's, it's happening. It's yeah. People are just. I, I think you got to let people just make their choices right now. That's what I think. Yeah. I think the more you push on them, the more you're going to get that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and I mean it's real. And then like people need to be responsible. And there's no denying that. But also like we're adults. Uh, yeah. Like treat us like adults, not like little kids. Yeah. I th- uh, yeah. For for us personally, uh, Jessica and I, we're going to isolate. We got a newborn. Sure. It's also flu season. Uh, so we're being pretty smart. My family is now scattered. So normally you'd have 40 or 50 people together. And so now what my family's done is the the people from each, like the San Jose people are going to be over here. The Sacramento people will be over there. And so people are kind of smaller parties. But for Jessica and I, we're just going to be at home. Just me, her, and, and the baby. Are you guys meeting with small groups? No, I'm with. I got uh, so we're 15 deep, mm. which uh, but that's small for us too, though, right? So yeah. we normally it's have breaking the law there. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> breaking the law. Uh, breaking and the law. Two of the 15 have had COVID already, um, so you can take them off. Then they're immune. And then two others will be had just got their test. I think yesterday, uh, to because they just came got they were sick and so they got tested. They were negative. So. Yeah, we've got four. Four of the fifteen uh, is pretty much. Uh, there's no risk, and then the other ones are like her mom or her, like all self isolated. Well, just people that we we already see on a regular basis. Like so, her her family we we continue to we've seen for since. I mean, there was the initial wave where everybody was like super isolated and mm-hmm. locked up. And then once everybody started to, to relax a little bit, we started to see like our immediate close family that would all live in the same town and all interact. So. Mm-hmm. Most of them, we don't have any like aunt coming in from some other city yeah. or somebody yeah, like New these. York or there's nobody yeah. that will be at Thanksgiving that I haven't been around in the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's all people that we see. Yeah, I'm just going to hang out with Courtney's <clears throat> parents and then her sister, and that's it. So mm. yeah, we're we're having kind of a small thing, and then the next day I'll see my parents and then my brother. So mm. that's as much as I got going. Yeah, on. I think you know, it's every winter we do see a spike in illness, no matter what. You forget COVID, right? You still see you still see cold and flu season go up, and um, it's largely due to the fact that people start to gather in big groups, but also low vitamin D levels. There's mm-hmm. no sun, um, you know. So and they fa- and and they definitely are showing that with COVID. Low vitamin D increases your risk for having severe symptoms. So yeah. it's a good idea to make sure your vitamin D levels are good. And then zinc is the other one. Zinc. Hey, yeah. Doug, I wanted to ask you, I, I know that uh, Casey or marketing side and stuff like that sent over an email about like we're gathering a bunch of testimonials right now. Yes. What, are, what What's going on with that? Like, where do people go? What's, uh, can you give me the whole lowdown? Right. Uh, I don't know all the details, but what they're doing is they're collecting testimonials of people who've gone through MAPS programs. And if you go to this page, it's mindpumpmedia.com forward slash MFP dash testimonial. You can also find that link at the mindpumppodcast.com site. That's where our show notes is. Okay. Uh, You'll be taken to a page. And in that page, you just need to include some information there. There's some questions to fill out. And then they're also asking for a video. So, uh, again, if you do this, you have a chance actually to be on this show. Mm. Oh, that's so that's the incentive here. So share share your testimonial, and the best ones will be chosen, uh, and somebody will be on the show. Awesome! It'll be yeah, a good time. Exciting. Speaking of maps, uh, the Black Friday sales on now, right? Yeah, yeah. it's going yeah. on right now. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening, crazy and, thing we've been done. holding out. You and know, here's your chance. It is. If you've been waiting to follow one of our maps programs, or you've been waiting to sign up for one of the maps programs you've been interested in, like one of the newer ones, like. Maps Powerlift, for example, um, all individual programs are sixty-five percent off. So every year, the biggest sale of the year by far, sweet baby Zeus, is Black Friday. So sixty-five percent off, and then bundles are the where we take the, mul- the multiple programs and put them together. And discount. So those are already discounted, typically thirty percent off. You can take an additional fifty percent off um, uh, of those programs, and the two codes are for the sixty-five percent off BF Maps, and then for the bundles is BF Bundles. Those are at MAPS uh, Fitness Products. 
dot com. So I think we're probably going to see um, a lot of more popularity with our at home programs. To be quite honest, oh, I think well, a lot of gyms are still speaking of at home stuff. Totally, I, you guys see too. Our our flags were almost sold out already too. So we did the garage flags. I right? kind of had a feeling because yeah, uh, doing I, I got a lot of messages from people for us to, to do that, and I think it's a cool idea because I wanted one for my own home gym. Yeah, and to just rock, you know, like a, a cool mind pump flag. So I can't believe I forgot. Out. I can't believe I forgot to bring some up to the Tahoe when we went out. Oh, that was, yeah. that was a mistake. I'm go back up, so I'll bring I'll bring some with us. But yeah, no, I'm gonna get one for my garage. Oh well, yeah, you better yeah, hurry. Dude. You guys we, both, gotta, we gotta represent. If you guys want them for your place, you better hurry. Dude, up. Speaking of garage, I did a workout over the weekend. I think you guys did one similar to this. That you ever do this where you set a, a, something in your head like I'm gonna do this many sit, sets and this many reps, mm -hmm. and then you get halfway through. And you're like, damn, that was uh, yeah, that was, that a, was a lofty goal, yeah. <laughs> but now I have to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This happened to me on Saturday. Uh, so to finish it, huh? I'm getting back into squats. I've been for a long time been working on unilateral and, and mobility and stuff. So I'm getting back. And squats for me, nothing blows my legs up like squats. And they work really, really well. So I'm excited to get back into them. So now this is like week three or four of me squatting again. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do – I'm just going to put 225 on the bar and do 10 reps. That's moderate intensity uh, for me. So I did 10 sets of 10 reps, oh. with one minute rest in between. Oh. And it was. <laughs> Bro, it was, it was, set seven or so of those. That's crazy. Oh, dude. By the time. So first set one, I'm like, pfft. Easy, yeah. You know, yeah. Set two, in set three. Bag. For, yeah, first four move pretty. I quick. have five to six, yeah. and I'm like, this is this is not gonna. I don't know, <laughs> you know. So I'm setting the safeties up, you know, because I might have to fail. Did your music progressively get more intense? I was like, I, that's usually how I. Have I to do. At that point, I couldn't. I didn't even check the music because I'm just sitting there, you know, resting uh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I did it. I did ten sets, and um, you know, I'm surprised. I'm not. Wow, that's, really? No, I'm not that wow. sore. And I that would have messed me up right now. Yeah. Dude, I swear to God, my legs grew. I swear to God, like a quarter inch to have. They blow up with squats. I don't yeah. know what it is about squats, but uh, it's they're, just crazy. They're swollen, bro. They're, Still, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. They're, You're like, I they're think they grew, yeah, I think they grew like two inches. No, yeah. bro, they're inflamed and they're swollen right now. That's what that is. <laughs> Need some ice. Yeah. Dude, Dude, I was going to follow up. I brought up the other day that there was like uh, people filming outside my house. So I've, I did some investigating. Oh, you found out what it was? Yeah. So I investigated. Adult, adult film? Yeah, it was totally a porn. Um, <laughs> It wasn't a porn. No. <laughs> it was a, I guess it's a movie. I don't know if it's coming out on Netflix or one of those type of like uh, Amazon or whatever, uh, you know, streaming service. Uh, but it's with Channing Tatum. And so uh, he's you better, starring. You better not it. tell your wife, bro. It's called the dog. Oh, I did. I was like, oh, your guy. Yeah. She's, she's out, out there. there. Hey, I mean, you just, put a tracking yeah, device on her. <laughs> I just, I just went by and like played some like you know d dance music just to see you know if I'd set him off. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. That's Jessica's That's, guy too. Yeah, she. I like it when she. No, she actually doesn't like him. Uh, but she thinks he dances. Jessica really well. doesn't say anymore when there's a guy that she thinks is hot. She'll yeah. just be like. We, do you guys? Do you want to watch this movie? Or she, or she yeah. just rewinds oh, it? Oh, this is interesting. No, no, Does she's, it look interesting? No, she's very subtle. Like she's really smart with the psychological shit. She's yeah. like, "Hey, you want to watch a movie tonight?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, sure." And then she'll pick it, and I'll be like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute." We've no, it's it. Thor, dude. Yeah. yeah. If if He's, if Thor was ever making a movie like near me, I'm, Chris, I'm done. Chris I'm done. I, here's my wife. You don't even call him his real name. You just call yeah. him Thor. No, it's just Thor, dude. <laughs> like he's earned it. Is it what Chris Chris Hemsworth? Helms Hems 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 Yeah. Yeah. He's not bad. I miss those L's. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a handsome guy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, speaking of t shows, I watched Wayne on Amazon oh, Prime. Oh, oh, good. Tell me, what do you think? Great show. I knew you were going to like it. I'm on episode eight, I think. Yeah, yeah Have yeah. you guys gotten pretty hey, far? So, uh, yeah. how about the Home Depot scene? How the crazy Home is Depot that? Home Depot hustle. Dude, I love that. Don't you go so to, messed that's up. That's got to be somebody does that bullshit. Dude, oh, dude. what a piece of dirt. What People a do that. Scumbag. Yeah, what a scumbag. Oh, but you know somebody does that bullshit. The casting and the writing for that, the, the all the characters are flawed, and but all likable. Even the bad characters, even the assholes, yeah. they make them like, in a way that you still like them. I knew, I knew you guys all would like it. Yeah, right? great. Yeah. Well great written. Show. I can't believe I missed it. You know, that's 2019. Yeah. It's been out for over a year. Oh, I love it. You know, my favorite part is when he turns on like punk music and then he starts dancing all weird, and, like <laughs> flopping like a fish. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like this guy. The Boston <laughs> accent cracks me up too. Uh, yeah, no, good show. Yeah, that's, great, that's a, a much watch. Great right? show. And then comedy. There's uh, Jim Gaffigan. What's his name? The comedian stand up. Am oh, I saying his name did right? Did he put up a uh, yeah on Amazon? I hope I said his name right. Maybe Doug can look him up. I feel terrible. Gaffigan. 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 Hilarious. And then Kevin Hart the did one. Hot pocket guy. Oh, I saw that. Was his any good? So I only halfway through, pretty good, but it's weird. 
It's in his house. It's I during COVID. That, yeah. It's oh, during COVID. So it's in his house, small audience. Everyone's wearing a mask. He so had you, some funny COVID jokes to open with. He but, did, yeah. but you don't hear the audience laughing as loud because it's yeah. only like They're all masked 20, 30 too. people. Yeah. And then with the mask, you can't see their facial expressions. So it throws it off a little bit. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but I don't blame him for trying. You know well, I mean? I'm glad that, yeah, somebody's at least trying to, to make it like, you know, like at least it's like a stepping stone back towards maybe they can start doing that more often. I was thinking I to know. myself what would have been smarter would have been to put everybody in a box with see-through plastic walls because as, an, as someone watching... I'm realizing when you're watching comedy, you want to see and hear other people. Yeah, you laugh. need the reaction. Yes, I otherwise, mean, the, it's, yeah, the comedian feeds off that too because yeah. it's like you know they 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 know how to like you know put more emphasis on things based off how they react, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. We yeah. went uh, we went snowboarding this weekend too, and they were, they policed that a lot more than I thought they were going to. How do they police that? Well, just every time somebody was in line, they ha they actually had people working that were walking, walking the lines and, down, and yeah. making sure your your face shield was up. Oh wow, yeah. yeah well, that, they want to stay open, so I don't blame them. Yeah, at all. That, oh, yeah, no. And I was whatever. I'm fine with that. I'm gonna have a problem with that. But I just thought, you know, you're outside and everybody's uh, kind of doing their thing. That they're it's gonna hard do. to breathe, dude. Because I mean, you're in altitude, and then you just like haven't done all these moves. Like, so I was. Uh, uh, this is the first time we took the kids because they've had lessons before that. This is the first time we took them like on the slopes, just with me and Courtney, and we were having <laughs> quite a time uh, for a bit, <laughs> especially with Everett. But uh, like, I I learned I have to like physically sort of hold him in place, and and then he gets it mm -hmm. once he gets the feel of it and then he's he was great the whole rest of the day the beginning was rough uh but ethan like just took off like he just was all about it and wanted to go to like the intermediate run and so i take him up on this intermediate run and we're up there and uh we start going down and he's doing great everything's working out but then we get to a point where i'm like okay we got to go on this side of the trail because it's like the easier side or there's like a black diamond and he's like, I want to go on this one. And then he just, I'm like, no, I don't know if that's a good idea, pal. And then, they, boom, he just goes down. Oh, shit. Yeah, he goes down. And I'm, like, following him, you know, on a snowboard. So it's hard for me to, like, stop and, like, you know, adjust and wait. And, like, he, so he's, like, flipping over. It gets His legs are all in different directions. <laughs> you know, he's just kind of laying there. He's like, oh, and he's trying to, like, pick himself back up. But he gets back up. And then, and then I'm like, are you all right? Everything cool? And then he gets up and just bombs it straight down, like doing pizza all the way down, like with like all kinds of speed. And I'm like, no, oh, no. <laughs> just praying he's going to be okay. And he just, he, he made it out. Wow. He, I was like, where'd all this daredevil stuff come from? That's you great. Know? And that's it. the oldest, right? So yeah. Everett's the one who's normally the one that's a little more fearless. And then he, you had a little more trouble with, right? He was yeah. a little scared when he first got He was got scared up. at first, but I mean, he's really young and, uh, it, it, so yeah, he he took a little more coaxing, you know, to get him to the place. But he he picked it up. Well, you gotta tell him what happened on the lift, dude, because he got one of those. Oh yeah, I forgot. So when we were going up, uh, you know, with Ethan too, this was another sort of lump against the whole thing. We're getting uh, off of of the ski lift, and so at the very end, you know, there's even signs for this. Everybody knows to do this. Like you gotta like bring those ski tips up. Uh, and so I was like talking to him. Okay. And I, I took the, you know, safety bar off and we're just kind of like going to, to the front there and like, just right before we get there, he, he drops his skis down. Do they get stuck? You know, they get hooked, get hooked. Yeah. It flops him forward. So he, he goes forward on his face and on his stomach and like, I get off and I'm like, Oh shit. And like, I, so, uh, he didn't go all the way down. He was kind of halfway up and then the chair was going to come like, just totally like smash into him. So I, <laughs> I jump over and I reach for him and I like smash him into the ground. So it like <laughs> went right over his head <laughs> and then, and then he gets up, he pops one ski out, right? This is, this is more of an advanced run. So there's like everybody there isn't beginners and they're all like, you know, <laughs> Know, like waiting for us and so i just like grab him and i like throw him to the side and his skis under there and i, gr and I grab that next and uh try to like assemble it all back and i'm like oh my god he's never gonna do this again and he's like <laughs> like that was nothing he's like oh whew, that was you know crazy <laughs> i'm like oh my god <laughs> Well, I don't know I if you've dying. ever if you've ever seen someone that that's like uh, that if there's a so when your 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 skis get your so skis you, is stuck so, in the snow. Well, no, no, no. Look at this. Okay. Or the, uh, when you when you're on the chairlift, like a ramp, and you're getting ready to come off the chairlift, there is a little mound, right? And then you you drop off, and you it's yeah, like, yeah. So what he did was he let his skis drop below the mound before you're even off the chair. Uh, so they hooked the mound, which throws you forward, and then you fall face forward. You see at least once every time I ski, I see one person do this, where they hook it, they fall off, and then you're like, you're sitting up, 
and then the chair and comes the chair behind, smacks, you, smacks in the head. you in the back of the head. It's like, I mean, when it's not you, it's the funniest shit ever you ever watch, or unless right. it's like your son that's happening oh, to you. So, but Justin to have the awareness to go jumping over there and then shove his face in the dude, snow. You guys ever yeah. watch that video? I don't know where it happened, but the ski lift went super fast and people were stuck on it. Did you ever see this? No. <laughs> and they were getting flung off. <laughs> what? You never saw this? I think no. I saw oh, this. it was going hella fast, but this is not, okay, it's funny, but it, it's not. It's, like people oh, were- It must have been the most scary thing ever. Bro, they were getting thrown off and people were getting smashed by the chair and the machine wouldn't stop. What? You never saw this video? No, I never well, saw that. Terrifying. I, I told you about the one time when I was at the theme park. I think it was, it was in Wisconsin. I was at like a Great America there. And uh, the, the the ride itself like had stopped and I was upside down and I was upside down for 20 minutes before they could finally like get everybody like off or turn turn the uh, ride back on. And so I'm there with this girl like on a date and I'm upside down and we had we had made the mistake, obviously big mistake of of bringing vodka with oh. us. Right. Oh. And so like we had poured it in one of those like frozen uh, lemonade slushies. And I drank that like right before I got on that ride. I was like yakking oh. upside down. Oh, look at wow. look at look at look at oh shit. Watch. Oh, this. You know what's so funny? I totally see Sal because we were last time we were all together last year and we were gonna go sk skiing and everything like that. And he was thinking, about, I could see your look, ass. Look at look at look. look, look, look. Oh Whoa. shit! No, no, this is no joke, and it wouldn't stop. Whoa! It just kept going, and people are trying to look at this, dude. Imagine, look, look, look. wow! Oh, I'm telling you, dude. That is not good. This is no. It's no joke, and it just wouldn't stop. There's another video of another place that this happened. Where's the emergency look. shut off? That's crazy. Yeah, look, people are people yeah, are bailing at, up I know, there. Look at the smart people that bailed early. Yeah. Well, yeah, dude, you're gonna get pulled into the. Look, look at. Yeah. They're like, jump, just jump off of it, man. They're yeah. like, hit the off button, you asshole. <laughs> wow, look at that. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. So well, there you go. Reason number seventy five. Why I will I know, not. Why I, I will not go skiing. I with totally. You, guys. you hear what I was yeah. saying? I was how like, many I, times does that I know that like we were all gonna go skiing last year, and Sal was like, "Let me Google and see how yeah, dangerous well, it is." What's like the worst yeah. thing that's <laughs> ever like, happened? Look, I don't want this to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst thing that ever happened? <laughs> avalanche. Let's start there. Yeah. And then I'll think about it. First question is from Og Doku. If you have food intolerances, do you still derive the nutritional value from those foods? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's kind of a that's kind of a general question, but um, I I can say with pretty good confidence that no, not necessarily for a few different reasons, right? Hmm. So, when you have a food that your body reacts to, you do get an immune response, uh, which changes hormones a little bit, causes more inflammation may reduce your ability to absorb and utilize nutrients. Um, and also, when you have this kind of elevated, low-level immune response in the body, it does make it harder for you to do things like build muscle mm. and, and burn body fat. So from that standpoint, you definitely want to avoid food intolerances. The, the, it's not this is, See, this is one of the reasons why you know just counting calories and macros – isn't really um, everything. Um, the, there's a lot more in the details, and the, your your body's so unique that how you react to the food also can play a role. Like for example, and I'll use an extreme example, right? Like dairy. I don't have an, a dairy allergy, but I have a pretty bad intolerance to dairy. Justin, on the other hand, um, can you know he can oh, drink and, all the dairy. He can drink and yeah. bathe in it, yeah. and he's probably okay. I am the dairy queen. <laughs> and so, let's say he drinks a uh, you know half a gallon of milk, and I drink a half a gallon of milk. Am I going to get the same effect from the protein, the carbs, and the fats that he will? No, I highly doubt it. I think it's going to cause a lot of inflammation, reduce my body's ability to absorb things. I'll get gastro issues. And I'm not going to get the great results. So uh, it, this is something you should definitely pay attention to. I think this is an interesting question, though, because I also think of it like as a new world problem. You know, you know like <laughs> in terms of like if there's food out there and I'm starving and I'm trying to get some food and that's like that's true. you're trying to say like you can't get any nutritional value from something that's going to make your tummy a little upset. Yeah. Um, I mean, but at the same time, let's let's say it gives you diarrhea and let's say that's something you get super dehydrated and now that's a problem you're going to be battling out in the wild too. So uh, I, I don't know, man. I guess it just depends, but it obviously over time we're talking about something that you're going to be constantly eating all the time well, so that's uh, in terms of frequency uh you know that could have more detriment to you than uh just getting it for the nutrients well along those lines okay diarrhea gastro issues constipation 
were big would have caused big problems for people. Sure, yeah, uh, could it, lead to death back in the day. Oh, diarrhea is a co- a leading cause of death in uh, third world countries uh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Lots of people die from diarrhea all the time. Um, what's that show where they put them in the Arctic? Remember that? Alive? No, what was it called? Oh, alone. Yeah, alone. Alone. Yeah. Uh, remember that girl who she was doing great, but she got so constipated yeah, that yeah. she had to leave because yes. she couldn't. So, you know, food intolerances are no joke, but that's the extreme. Like, let's forget yeah. the extreme. Let's just say you get bloated or you get a little bit of gastro issues or a little bit of inflammation. It's a, it's probably a small effect, but it's cumulative, you know, over, over the years, are you going to get the same benefit? As if you were eating foods that you your body was you know worked well with. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think probably so. Probably not. No, yeah. probably not. All right. Next question is from the bad mad scientist. When I wake up, I feel very stiff and immobile, and it takes me a while to regain my natural mobility. Welcome to the club. I'm what real, can I'm I do? In the morning. <laughs> what can I do before, during, and after I sleep to help me? Wake up and move better. Yeah, a couple of thirteen-year-olds. Well, <laughs> mine was like legit. This guy over here went the other direction. I was. Just, I don't know where you guys' minds yeah, are. Yeah, uh, just as like I'm I just, got. A, I'm just echoing. I got you. a remedy for feeling stiff. <laughs> so here's the deal. All right, let's get serious. So um, number one, your the, the studies will show this. If your sleep is not uh, optimal, you will wake, wake up with more inflammation and pain. So. Make sure you sleep well. Have a sleep routine where you know a couple hours before bed you prepare by turning down the lights and you can relax. Make sure you have a good environment for sleep. The right temperature helps quite a bit. I know when I use the uh, the chili pad, for example, um, I wake up less stiff in the morning than when I don't use it. Um, inflammatory diet, that kind of stuff, can also play a role. How comfortable your bed is, you know, uh, if you've ever slept on a bad bed, you know what a difference that makes yeah. when you wake up in the morning. But let's say that you forget all that and you still wake up stiff in a mobile. Yeah, you, you you definitely can wake up and and stretch and do five minutes of mobility. Well, I've noticed this just with myself in terms of changing up my workout routine uh, made a massive difference, mm-hmm. uh, and that I, I didn't realize just doing my normal barbell training, I had to you know step away from that for a bit and, and work a little bit more on unilateral kind of training and. Uh, you know, give my joints uh, some time to uh, to work on stability again, uh, and that really helped because I would wake up in the morning stiff, like my hips would hurt, like my shoulder would be achy, and uh, you know it wasn't until I sort of started changing up my workout routine where that sort of got alle- alleviated again, and then I could come back to it. So this is similar to what happens to me if I get like a lift in, and then I go for like a three hour plus drive too, where you're just in a fixed position after you've trained really hard. So, you know, and and I know that, and I know this now, right? So I know if I go like heavy squats and then I got to drive three hours or whatever like that, if I just ignore doing some mobility work before I get in that car, I'm going to pay for it. You know, about an hour and a half in to two hours in, you're going to see me like rocking forward in the in the driver's seat because my low back is all tight. You're going to see me shifting around because my feels like someone's stabbing the side of my hip, like my IT is like on fire. So if I don't do it, but if I get down and I go, okay, I know I got to drive three and a half hours or more. If I get on get down and I do some 90-90 mobility work before running, it's a night and day difference. The same thing goes... For before I go to bed, I know if I train like heavy squats or deadlifts, if I do not do some foam rolling or some mobility work before I go to bed, I know I'll wake up and I'll pay for it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and, and that's going to be different for everybody. For me, it's low back and hips. Like that's the that's the big difference. Like I don't really wake up with tight shoulder issues or upper back stuff. It's always in my hips. It's either my IT or my low back, which is all hip complex stuff related, which is all 90-90 for me. So if mm-hmm. I get down before I go to bed and I do some 90-90 drills before I get into bed, I wake up totally different than if I just ignore that and I know I train hard and I go to sleep then I'm paying you for know it. I also use that feeling of waking up and feeling stiff as a very effective sign um, of at, overreaching well or just mobility issues in oh, general yeah. like I may not notice during the day and when I'm working out that my back uh, bothers me um, but if I go to bed and notice when I wake up I got to kind of crunch a little bit before I sit up or I got to roll it differently to sit up and then my back's a little stiff and then it feels better that's kind of an early sign to me that, okay, I'm lacking a little bit of core stability. Mm-hmm. I'm only noticing it right now when I wake up uh, from you know from sleep, but if I don't answer it now, if I don't fix it now, then it's going to start turning into problems when I'm yeah. awake during the day and when I work out. So uh, oftentimes you can use this as uh, a little bit of an early, like a canary in the coal mine. Indicator. Yeah. Here's another thing too. 
you can go to you can have uh, anti-inflammatory natural foods right before bed, and this may actually make a difference. So, I like um, turmeric is a great uh, uh, food you could take before bed. Uh, Organifi's gold juice um, has lots of turmeric and anti-inflammatory herbs and plants in it that you can drink before bed. Um, also that, helps for calming you down too. Calming, great. yes. So those things make a difference. Uh, bromelain, bromelain is an enzyme that if you take on an empty stomach, so if you take it with protein or with food, it's an enzyme that breaks down, uh, I believe, proteins. But if you take it on an empty stomach, bromelain has a, quite a remarkable anti-inflammatory effect. So if you, you know, let's say you ate at eight, you know, seven p.m. for dinner, but you go to bed at ten, that's three hours, empty stomach. Take, you know, some bromelain, go to bed, see if that makes. Yeah, a difference. that one was trippy. Like I remember, I had uh, talked to you about that, and then one of my clients had really swollen knees, like constantly, and and supplemented with bromelain made a big difference. And it's it's natural. It's, it's like from uh, pineapples. It's right? remarkable how effective it is as a natural anti-inflammatory. Um, but yeah, you you can do those things too, and they're natural, so they're not like. You know, NSAIDs or aspirin, where they have those types of side effects, they're usually pretty safe. Next question is from Mike Helm Seven. I'm bulking, but I feel like I'm getting fat. Help! Sound like Sal? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the Sal right Damn, now. Huh? Does, but does he look like Sal? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because he says getting fat. No, this is. A, I think this is. Uh, this is really a such a fine dance, right? When you are trying to put uh, weight on or put size on. Is you know you know you need to eat in a calorie surplus, but I think that it took me a very very long time before I got comfortable with how little of a surplus I needed in order to bulk and put size. Totally, on. because the the whole I mean n nothing is uh, more frustrating from this for the skinny guy or girl who's trying to build muscle and is you know pushing the calories and lifting every day, and then they wake up one morning and they're lighter than they're, they're the scale is lighter than what it was two days ago. Or they gain like a pound in a month. Yeah, you know, and so yeah. um, that really messed with my head for a very long time when I was trying to bolt, and so I was always just overstuffing and overfeeding during the bolt, and then I would just put on way too much body fat. So I, you know, you just got to be if you have good programming. So if you're following a maps program. And you're eating even in the just the slightest bit of a surplus. I promise you, you're bulking. You're probably putting muscle on. And if you're not seeing the scale move, that's okay. There's probably a very nice exchange. You're probably even leaning out a little bit, and then you're also adding a little bit of of muscle. Do not let yourself get caught up in what the scale is reading. If you're doing, if you got good programming and you're eating yeah. in a Are surplus, you getting stronger. Right. I mean, that's, that's one the of those best main indicator. Things, yeah. Yeah. Getting stronger is a great one. It's not completely foolproof because sometimes no. getting fatter changes. Changes your leverage, mm -hmm. and it does make you uh, a little strong. Like my squat will go up if I gain body fat for some reason. I just can squat more weight. Um, but but you look at general. Am I stronger in all my lifts? Um, if you, if there's a yes there, that's positive. Like Adam said, have a good workout. You can be in a calorie surface uh, surplus. Have a great diet. If your workout's not stimulating muscle, you ain't gonna gain muscle. You're right. just gonna gain body fat. Uh, Maps anabolic. And MAP Strong, in my opinion, are the two best bulking muscle building programs, generally speaking. So if you're looking for a good program, or aesthetic, uh, aesthetic can be great too. A little more yeah. advanced, though, right? Right, right. Yeah, a little more. But for the average person, I'd say anabolic or strong mm -hmm. would do it. Aesthetic, great if you're experienced. I mean, no matter what, I would. I don't care how experienced you are. I would go anabolic first, and then either to strong or aesthetic as the second program, yes. and then the th other yeah, one for yeah. the third. And then, as far as surplus is concerned, you don't need a whole. You don't need a massive surplus to gain uh, muscle. Um, you know, how many, look, let me put it this way, gaining a pound of muscle a week would be remarkably fast bulking. I mean, that's like super genetics, muscle building. I don't expect that to happen in anybody yeah. except for maybe a beginner with, with decent muscle building genetics. But let's just say for hypothetical reasons, you could gain a pound of lean body mass. How many calories and grams of protein and carbs and fats do you think it really would take your body to gain that pound of muscle? It's not much at all. Mm -hmm. It's like... 50 extra calories a day or less or something like that. So you don't need the huge surpluses. So if you're getting fat, you're probably eating too much, and I would look at your workout. If you fix those two things, then you'll fix this problem. Next question is from Adam Pullman Fit. How has incorporating and vocalizing your personal opinions and details about your lives 
positively or negatively affected the brand, business, and your personal life. You guys remember Adam, right? Adam was, uh, I think it was Colorado where he came out to the live event. Tall, tall, good looking fit guy. He has his own podcast. He's probably interviewed both of you and you don't even remember. Yeah, I do. I do recognize his name. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So totally he's, known. yes, <laughs> stupid guy. He's, <laughs> Sorry. He's full of shit over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so he's got. He's got. He's like, well, I gotta call. Put us on blast. Well, I gotta call yeah. him out like that. Yeah, for, I mean, he's on video. You can see his face. You can I mean, see. If that. I saw his face, hey. I'd know. No, hey, no, yeah, but no. I'm saying. Name, like, I'm on. saying your Just, your face is on camera, so it's like so it's very <laughs> obvious. I, I mean, I might be calling it out, but he looks confused as shit as he says it. Like, hmm. Hey. Yeah. No, hey, I, I totally remember. Yeah, Justin doesn't remember the tall, handsome guys like you do. Adam. I know. That's the problem. Adam gets fixated and drawn yeah, right hey, into Justin, that. Justin, he was next to that attractive girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally yeah. Remember, yeah. remember now. Yeah, I remember now. You, you know what? I have some very strong opinions about this because I think times have changed a lot when it comes to this. In the past, I think it's safe to say it was not a smart idea for anybody in media to talk about their personal opinions on a lot of different things. In fact, uh, PR agencies used to tell celebrities all the time, do not talk about politics, do not talk about personal opinions, don't do any of that stuff, just stay general because it could screw you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. These days, with the cancel culture, it's a little bit different, okay? If you say the wrong thing or you do the wrong thing or you act in a way that whatever pisses off the mob, they could literally destroy your career. Now, my opinion, and I think you guys will agree with me, and if, even if this wasn't true, we'd do it anyway, because that's another part to this. But in my opinion, if you build your business saying what you're going to say and being who you're going to be, then you're somewhat protected of that in the future. Because if something happens and something comes out and we're like, oh, Sal said this about politics, we, people are going to be like, he's been saying that for yeah. since day gotta one. be consistent. Yeah. And oh, you know, oh, you know, Adam was seen drinking a Diet Coke. I thought he was, yeah, he talks about that all the time. It's not a big deal. Like, right. I think if you're going to build a business in new media, then you need to be you need to be somewhat authentic and real because at some point someone's going to see something or whatever they're going to come after you maybe and if they do what are you going to do come after me i've been this way since day 1 i've been honest since day 1 so i think that somewhat protects you yeah i th i think these days it's just different like uh, the the days of of portraying yourself in a certain light and and you know having the the lambo behind you and like whatever like staple of success looks like uh I think those days are, uh, you know, it doesn't do as well as it used to. I know it still does well for some of these guys out there that can kind of uh, portray themselves like that. But I just feel in terms of a long-term strategy to get as close to your authentic self as possible. Um, I mean, it 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 is what it is. Like you either like me or you don't at, at a certain point. And I think we've been getting slowly more comfortable with the fact of like, this is who I really am. Uh, and, and so like, I, I don't really know how to be anything else. And I think people appreciate that at the end of the day. Well, I think this is, I actually think this is necessary, right? Because at one point, if you try and, you know, only talk about the things that you think that everybody wants to hear about, and you're not being your authentic self, and you're holding back uh, your opinions and your values and your views, then you, and, and let's say you actually build a successful business, then you got to get up every day and you got to be this person that isn't completely you. And so even if it's doing well financially and it's growing, uh, you don't get to be yourself. I promise you that that that'll be short lived. And you know what? In the past, Adam, that that you there was a buffer between you and people who watched you on TV or whatever. There's no more buffer. Yeah. So yeah. you're screwed. If exactly. You're not. So then you got to get on your social media every day and pretend to yeah. be this character that you really are not. And you know, this was a conversation that uh, we all agreed very early on. It's like we're going to be, you know, raw and real in ourselves. And and here's the deal. What's neat and why I think this is important today, and you can and you definitely can still get away even with cancel culture. culture is there's a very good chance there's a million people out there, at least in the internet, that are just like you, mm -hmm. that think like you, that are similar in age, similar in values and views. So don't be afraid of the, you know, of the other hundred million that are totally not like you. You don't care. Your goal is to find those million people that, and you don't even need a million, but I'm just throwing that out well, there. Let, let them find you. Yeah. Or yeah, exactly. Be yourself and continue to be yourself. And then eventually they, your tribe of people that are wanting the information that you have or the value that you have to provide will we'll seek you out. And then what's great about that is you don't have to constantly be apologizing yeah. for the way you do things. I mean, I, I think that was one of the things like Sal was alluding to that really, I think, saved our ass. I mean, we came out so 
over the our personalities over the top yeah. on the beginning. <laughs> yeah, we throttled hard. Yeah, if anything, yeah. we've kind of backed off a little bit. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure, okay, our core audience is definitely, they've got just as dark of a sense of humor as we do. They're okay with profanity. They're all those things. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't have been paying attention to us. And yep. so we don't have to deal with a lot of that bullshit. Yeah, and, and the, the truth is that it's not going to guarantee you success. It might hurt your business, but so what? Then you're not in that situation where you're either acting fake or vulnerable. That's the thing that you got to be careful with is you can make yourself very vulnerable. Um, you know, I was talking about Kevin Hart uh, earlier in this episode about his his comedy thing. And he said how um, he had announced that he was going to go plant-based. Mm. And then a couple days later, he was eating a Big Mac. And some lady with a cell phone took a picture of him. Ah, I got you. And then he's like, oh, man, now I got to apologize to all these people or whatever. Yeah. And so that's the, the world we live in. There's cameras everywhere, people all around you. It's not going to guarantee success. It might hurt you. Who knows? But at the end of the day, in my opinion, there's only one way to be successful through media, and that is to be authentic. That's the only way I can do it. I don't want to walk around looking over my shoulder. I, don't, I am not the kind of person who's going to apologize to the mob that I don't even fucking know. I don't even know who you are. I'm going to yeah. apologize for some. So I'm just going to be who I am. And then, you know, if someone gets mad, I know there's going to be, you know, 10,000 other people and be like, oh, he's, he said that like 15 other times. Yeah. Like you're an idiot for getting mad. That's just who he is. Right. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video um, and audio. So you can come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. That's Instagram and Parlor. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug the producer at Mind Pump Doug. Doing all these competitions, you're getting crazier and crazier levels of it. <laughs> what is it that's the driving force of this at this time? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, well, the driving force is wanting to stand out, I think, because I wasn't good enough for any of these things. I just did them. The, I, for me, it was the act. Like, Marathon Swims is great because...